Let's talk about structuring your Lunar Vim config. We'll start with the location, which is under home user.config lvim, and the entry point is config.lua, so this file right here. So anything you put in this file will be sourced immediately when Lunar Vim starts. And I'll do a quick PWD to print the working directory so you can see exactly where we are, home, in my case, chris.config lvim. And in this directory, just like NeoVim, you can also add a Lua directory. So we'll do make dear Lua and list out all the files. Now you can put all of your modules directly in that Lua directory there and source them in your config.lua, but you probably should namespace them under something else that's unique as well. So we're gonna go into the Lua directory here and we're gonna do mkdir and do something like user. I usually use user but you can use anything as long as it's unique enough to where other plugins and other maybe libraries and things like that aren't going to collide with whatever you choose. Typically something like your name or user will be unique enough and you won't really have to worry about it too much. From here we can add all of our own modules for things like options, keybinds, plugin configuration, and more. So to demonstrate, let's cd into the user directory and create a options.lua file. Now let's add a few options so it becomes obvious that when we source this file, things have changed. So we'll do vim.op.number, for instance, and we'll set that equal to false. So the line numbers should turn off once this file is sourced, and we'll do vim.op.cursor line, and we'll set that equal to false as well. And maybe we'll do vim.opt.cursor cursor column and set that equal to true. These options should make it obvious enough that once this file is sourced, we'll tell that it was actually sourced and these changes have been made. Now the only thing that we need to do is require it in our config.lua. So let's go up a couple directories here and we'll open up our config.lua file. And from here, we'll just get rid of the config that I had in there. And instead we'll require our options module. So let's do require, We'll put some double quotes here and we'll do user dot and you should see it show up in the LSP completion menu here as well. So we'll put that there, we'll save the file. So you should notice that the cursor line is gone, there are no longer any numbers here and if I add a few lines like this and maybe type some text you can see that the cursor column is following along with my cursor. Now this require function worked this time around to source it immediately once we save the file because we had never required this file ever before. So if we go back there and we try and change something, for instance, we try to set our numbers back to true. So we'll jump over here, set this equal to true, and go back to our config file and save. And let's remove this down here so we don't get an error. Then you'll notice the numbers don't come back. They will, however, come back after closing your config restarting LunarVim, and you'll see that the changes that you just made will be there. But in the next video, we're gonna be introducing a replacement for the require function called reload, which will allow you to reload the changes that you make in other files. For instance, now if we go to options and we set the cursor line back to true and save, and then come back to the config.lua file, you'll notice that the cursor line is back. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful and we'll be going over this reload function in more detail in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider sponsoring the channel over on GitHub Sponsors or joining as a channel member over on YouTube. You can also head over to chrisatmachine.com to find links to all of my socials, projects, and other donation methods as well. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.